This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, this video I am starting a brand new sketchbook, the long-awaited new sketchbook. I talked about this one a lot recently. It's the Royal Talons Art Creation sketchbook. I got the like 8x5-ish size in this nice light purple color. And I've been wanting to try out these sketchbooks for a long time because they're always very highly recommended by people and they come in such pretty colors. Who doesn't love a sketchbook that comes in like every color you could imagine? Well, not every color, but it comes in a lot of different colors. And I saw this light purple one and I knew I had to get it. And I thought in this video, I would just try tons of different media on it. And I am drawing basically just whale sharks this entire video. I don't think I've drawn them before this um, sketchbook session. I wanted to do whale sharks for the January print of the month for Patreon. And if you're interested in that, you can grab it on my Patreon. Um, but I always like to do a sketchbook page to go along with the print. So that's what I decided to do for this video. And also it just kind of helps me learn how to draw the animal that I am drawing in the actual print because sometimes I'll choose an animal that I don't really know how to draw, that I haven't really drawn much before. And when I do a whole sketchbook page of that animal, I learn how to draw it a lot better. And I start off really unsure and I end the sketchbook page by knowing how to draw it without needing a reference and being able to stylize it and kind of make it my own. So I kind of go on that journey with each animal that I decide to draw. And um, I actually end up doing a lot of art in this video. I do a spread and then I do another page. So there's like three pages total. So there's gonna be lots of art for you to see. And um, for the pencil crayon, I'm using the Faber-Castell Polychromos. I'm using this like dark navy color that I like to do for outlines. I actually really like doing pencil crayon sketches because that way you can actually choose a color for the sketch. If you do like pencil sketches with graphite, it's more of a neutral color and I find that once you start adding like paint and watercolor on top of the graphite, it can become a little bit muddy when it mixes with uh, the gray. Like the watercolor can pick up the gray and mix it in. So I like to use pencil crayon to sketch when I can, but sometimes I just really like a good old regular pencil to sketch. But today I chose a dark blue one and then I went in with uh, my Ohuhu water-based markers. I don't use alcohol markers in sketchbooks because they just bleed through too much for my liking. And I'm not doing anything too fancy. I just kind of drop in color and just play with color and just fill in areas. It's never really that planned out. It's usually just like spur of the moment, messy, whatever comes to mind. I just use whatever colors I think would be fun to use in the moment and I pull some sketches together into more completed looking things. I really don't plan much when it comes to my sketchbook pages at all. And actually I had only been using like a small portion of my markers for the last few months or like for the last year. I, I, I have like 120 colors and a lot of them were still in their case, um, but I only like pulled out like maybe half of them and put them in little like tins, little like uh, pencil holders little containers. And uh, recently I went in and I took out all the other colors that I've never used and added them to the ones that I already had out. So now all of the markers are at my disposal. And I ended up using a lot of colors that I usually don't go for because they aren't usually available. They're usually away. So I think I ended up incorporating some fresh markers that I haven't used before. And something I did recently is I took some like really thin labels and I colored them with the marker and then put the label on the lid of the marker so that I know what the color will look like before I use it. But I noticed some of them have already faded a lot because they're not very light fast. That's why I use them as sketchbooks and not like actual paintings because the sketchbook stays closed and it's not really exposed to the light that much. But I made sure to point the lids downward so that they wouldn't be exposed to the light. And that also like lets the marker be more juicy when you go to use it. But some of them have still like faded. I think it's just like, there's this one neon green color that has turned into like a turquoise and it's really weird. Um, so it's not an exact science with these water-based markers and like the labeling of the lids. It's just a general idea because some of the lids are so far off from what the color is that it's actually like 
shocking and it's really hard to know what color you're about to use, so the labels have been really useful. Now for a quick break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform where you can build your own website. I think it's really useful for artists and small businesses, especially because you can showcase your portfolio online. I use Squarespace for my portfolio and it was really easy to set up. All I did was go through all of their templates, choose one that I thought would fit with the kind of aesthetic that I wanted, and then you can change a lot of things about the template to fit your needs. Dealing with so many different images can be tricky, but I use their portfolios in galleries feature and they also have automatic image scaling and this just makes it really easy to upload all your artwork, rearrange them, and they will all be displayed beside each other nicely. You can also link to all of your different social media accounts so that people know where to find you easily. If this sounds interesting to you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash gelarts and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I also took a palette that I made recently at a friend's pottery studio and I decided to put a bunch of my watercolors into it and sort of like have a fresh palette for um, this page. and when I go to use watercolors. I, I wanted to test if this sketchbook could handle watercolor because I've heard that it can handle some light washes, but it won't, you can't do anything too intense. Like you can't like layer and layer and like do really like wet intense washes, but I decided I'm just gonna use it how I normally do and see what happens and it turned out fine. The paper does buckle a bit, but it dries pretty flat and it's just nice and smooth. Um, I'm not used to using smooth paper for watercolors. I usually use toothy paper, like my cold pressed sketchbooks. I've been using cold pressed sketchbooks for the last like three sketchbooks that I filled, but this one is more smooth. I don't know if you'd call it hot press, but it has that feel. And um, I'm kind of really liking the like smooth paper. It's, it's always nice to kind of switch between the two kinds of papers because you can always make different kinds of art on each one. Like the cold press is more textured, more toothy stuff kind of like blends together a bit better, but on hot press, you can really see all the texture um, on these smooth kinds of papers. And it was kind of fun to see how the watercolor wash is dried. So I think I'm gonna really like this sketchbook. I, I really enjoyed the first couple pages that I've done here and I'm excited to see what else I make in it. Another thing I was worried about with this sketchbook was the off-color yellowish paper. I usually work on like a bright white paper just so it's like nice and blank. There's no like tint to it at all, but honestly, the biggest thing for me was filming it and like how it would look when I filmed, and also, um, I like to draw on white paper because it lets me white balance the footage in my editor. Um, so for this, it wasn't as easy to white balance. Um, ideally, you want to white balance it on your camera, but it's not always going to be perfect because the lighting kind of changes throughout the day. And I just like to go into the color editor and I drop white and then it like automatically balances everything. But I just kind of eyeballed it for this and I think it just gives the footage a nice like warm look. Another thing you might notice is I figured out that my camera can record in 4K. I've been like mildly unhappy with the quality of my videos like ever since I started my channel. I like compare my footage quality to other people's and I'm like, why does mine always look a little bit fuzzy, a little bit grainy, especially when I'm zoomed out. It just looks worse when I'm zoomed out. When I zoom in, it looks pretty good, but when I'm zoomed out, it just looks fuzzy and weird. I've been recording in 1080p for like years, um, but I just figured out that my camera actually has a 4K setting and this doesn't mean I want to upload in 4K. It just means like the raw footage that I get is going to be higher quality. And when I scale it down to 1080p, it looks better than filming in 1080p. And it's going to give me more um, wiggle room to like make reels and stuff because I can like crop them and the quality will still remain. The file size is way bigger, but I think my computer can handle rendering it and it doesn't actually take that long to copy the footage over. So I don't know why I didn't own my camera could do 4K, but I'm hoping this will kind of like elevate the quality of my videos a little bit going forward. And I didn't even have to buy a new camera. I could have been doing this all along, but I haven't because I just like didn't know that it could do that. I think maybe I knew, but I thought like, oh, 4K is overkill. Like the file size is going to be huge. I don't think my computer can even handle it, but I should have just tried. But, you know, I know that now. 
and we're gonna see how this one goes. Only the second half is 4K, the first half is 1080p, but really the whole video is 1080p because that's how I export things. But I think the 4K portion should look a little bit clearer, a little bit sharper. Um, so I don't know if you'll notice that or not. Also, once I started like coloring the background of this page, I was kind of like, okay, I think I'm overdoing this. I'm adding too much. It's getting muddy. It's getting like overworked a little bit, but you know, it's just a sketchbook. I'm just going to keep going. And I don't really mind the way it turned out. Um, it's kind of like a fun first page. It's very like colorful and textured and just like fun to look at. But um, ideally I wouldn't have went in the background so much and like added so many like random hatchy lines. Um, the next page, I decided to do something a little bit more light and a little bit more colorful, more like simplified, but still painted and fun. I wanted to do watercolor and um, I was really having fun mixing all the different blues together. Whenever I paint something a solid color, I don't like to just use one color. I like to use a little bit of this color, a little bit of that color, like drop in one color, add a little green to it, put some more on the page, add a little more green to it, and then go back to the blue, maybe add a little purple, and sort of make the wash of color have, like, the hue will like vary throughout it, and I think it just gives it a nice look. Um, another weird thing on this page is that there's like random vertical lines down the page, and I hope this isn't on every page. Um, I have a feeling it's just because it's like right next to the cover, and it might have something to do with the binding, or like the way they make the co the cover, it must have some kind of, I don't know. I don't know what those lines are. I had to remove them digitally when I scanned the page in for Patreon because I just like couldn't have those there. But if you notice like a difference between the two pages, that's why um, weird lines. I don't really know why that happened, but it's whatever. It's just a sketchbook. And I just really like the way these like turquoise colors look on screen. I just think they're so fun. I used a black brush pen to outline everything on this page. I wanted to keep it like kind of clean and simple. And it was just so much fun drawing whale sharks. Um, at first I was overwhelmed because, okay, it's like a shark, but it's also a whale. It kind of has the anatomy of both. Like the mouth is wide like a whale, but the body looks like a shark. And from the side, it kind of looks like a shark, but from the front, it doesn't. And I was like, what angle do I draw it as? because I want to be able to show off the like wide mouth because that's what everyone knows about whale sharks. They have this like gigantic mouth and they eat like tiny little things like like how whales do. Um, and also they're covered in white spots and there's like a certain pattern to the spots that I was trying to interpret because around their head, the spots seem more random and they're more like scattered like a galaxy, but on their body, they sort of appear in like stripes. And I wasn't sure how like, bright I wanted the spots to be, how much should I exaggerate the stripes? And I tried to look up how other artists tend to draw whale sharks and how they get it to successfully look like a whale shark while still being a bit simplified. And I sort of like combined all that together and decided on a way to draw them. Just like a nice subtle like stripes down their tail with the dots following a line. But then as you get towards the head, it becomes more scattered and more randomized. That's sort of what I decided on. And I like adding the little like, they're not teeth, but they're these like little like pieces of their like top lip mouth area that kind of look like teeth. So I make sure to add those as well. Cause I just think it's like a cute detail. And I wanted to add the golden trevallies, if that's how you say it around them, because those are like the yellow fish that follow them. And then also the remoras that will kind of like latch onto them and follow them around because whenever you look up photos of whale sharks, you see these like little guys following them around. And I feel like it's an important part of their like life. They just have these little fish that follow them. I just think it's really cute. All of the um, symbiotic relationships in the water and how like creatures will benefit from each other and sort of have this like companionship. It's, it's really wholesome. And I wanted to show that. And that's kind of like a big part of the the actual print that I did. And I'll probably be posting a process video of the print as well, just so you can hear my thoughts because it was challenging. I learned a lot with that print. Um, there was a few areas where I wasn't sure what to do, like something was looking off and then I, I would fix it and like troubleshooting how to draw water and like ripples and reflections and like 
what kind of composition I wanted. Even then, I am not like a thousand percent happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it. I have to see how the print turns out once it actually like comes out of the printer, like the prints that I ordered. Once I see them in person, then I can decide how I feel. Um, I think I've just been staring at it for way too long. I think it's a pretty good print. It has a certain atmosphere about it that I really like. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun drawing all these whale sharks. Um, the first page is more messy, more experimental, more like painterly, slapping stuff on the page. The second page is a little more simple, more cute, fun, simplified, and that's what I went with for the print because I just think, I, I just thought it would make a nice print. If you want to get this package, make sure to pledge to my Patreon before January ends. You can either get the two prints, you can get the sticker, which is going to be really cute, or you can get everything. There's three different bundles to choose from depending on your budget and how much you would like to receive in the mail. I had a lot of fun with this. I link all my materials in the description. Um, and my rating for this sketchbook is I like it. I'm excited to see what else I can make in it and to see what it can handle. So far, it's handled a lot. So. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed seeing all of this. Let me know if you like whale sharks and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.